U.S. forces are now on the ground in every Gulf Arab country. They're all going through the same drills, making the same preparations for war. During this practice, the tanks fire laser beams instead of bullets. But for the soldiers, the lessons of this mock war are just as valuable. Lieutenant Colonel Gatesy and his soldiers will face real bullets and real bombs during a real battle. As their commander, he knows that some of his soldiers may be injured and possibly even killed. And that is where Colonel Gatesy begins his conversation with my colleague, Don Daler. I think about it every day, um, particularly today and in, in, in the in world that we live in, um, the age that we're living in right now. And the fact that uh, I've been uh, given this awesome responsibility of uh, having a task force on the ground in Kuwait. And we're going to do what it takes to make sure that um, America, when it presents a combat op uh, a close combat operation, wins. And uh, there's, no, there's no turning back on that. And um, my soldiers understand that. I understand it. It's a trust uh, that we have. You know, war is a very a random event, um, and you, you don't know who's, who's got you in your iron sights at any particular time, um, and you have to wrestle with that. But uh, I'm very confident in my soldiers' ability to continue the mission and also evacuate casualties if required, and we'll do it, and we will keep going forward. We will present close combat violently. You think your guys are ready? My guys are ready to go anywhere. Uh, this is a a very, very strong battalion, very, very strong task force, and we are, we are ready. We completed last week uh, some of the toughest training that I've been through, uh, some of the toughest training my soldiers have been through in extreme weather conditions. And uh, we, we maintained our equipment and we fought on our equipment well, and uh, just feel really comfortable with this formation and, and its capabilities. It's a far cry from going in and facing an enemy that is shooting back, that's trying to kill you. First of all, um, we know in our army that we're going to fight like we train. And the harder we make the training, the more demanding we make the training, and the more feedback mechanisms there are. It's a subjective, uh, subjective evaluation, but it, it, it lets you know that when you can operate under that tempo and execute like we executed, that this organization is, is ready for combat and will bloody anybody's nose in the world very quickly. Close with and bloody a nose very quickly. I'm confident of that. Anywhere in the world. When I was with your guys earlier this week, sure. bouncing all over the desert, um, they are an eager bunch. I mean, they were so enthusiastic. The heat was ungodly, 150 degrees, something like that. But there also, there was an underlying tension there. And they don't talk about the possibilities out loud, but they're thinking about it. And I'm wondering, as their commander, how do you keep them focused on the task at hand, the, the training, the learning, and not worry about what may happen? Ah, great question. First of all, anybody that's a soldier um, thinks about the pro possibility of going into combat on a daily basis, um, particularly when you're in a deployed environment like we are here. That's just that is a, a doubt that I think every soldier carries with them, it, it, but it's healthy. It helps keep you sharp and it helps you want to make sure that you do not let your buddy or your unit down. That doubt that you carry with you that I will be there when I'm supposed to be there and do what I'm supposed to do. So how do I deal with that as a commander? I make sure that the training is tough and demanding and as realistic as, pos realistic as possible. So when uh, they are confronted with uh, a combat situation, like our soldiers in Afghanistan. They react to how well they were trained and their training took over. The fear um, is there, but the fact that you have solid, good training to fall back on, to confront those situations with, um, get your troops ready for, for going into combat. So the fear isn't necessarily a bad thing? No, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. I'm, I'm, I have to tell you, personally, uh, you know, I'm nervous as their commander. Um, but I try to channel that fear into making sure that I do the best I possibly can for my soldiers every day by making the t training tough and demanding and taking care of them when I can. You have a, a good relationship with your soldiers. Uh, I've seen you joking around with them. There, there doesn't seem to be 
um, any lack of respect on their part, but they seem to relate well to you. And, and I'm curious, do they, do they come to you and say, I'm, I'm scared, I'm nervous about this? I've had soldiers come to me for a, a lot of uh, soldier issues. Um, but to have a soldier come up to me and say that he's, he's nervous about being here in Kuwait, I, I, haven't, I haven't sensed that at all. Mm -hmm. I'm, hopefully I'm the kind of leader that uh, my junior leadership and my soldiers can come, come, come talk to me about those kinds of fears that they're having. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm one that uh, I like to talk about them, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the nature of my personality. I, I, I try to use that as a strength, um, and that helps me wrestle with my own internal demons and fears that I have. My younger days in the Army, I didn't see myself really being in this chair. Up Close, brought to you by Chevy Trucks.